Okay, so for our first recipe of this evening of Clement's Extraordinary Ordinary Kitchen, is crepes. I'm Bulgarian. In Bulgarian, we call this palachinki, you know? So this particular brand that I got is from Amazon. It's called Stonewall Kitchen. It's 25 bucks for two of these car for two of these jars, right? It's a really good value. It's Stonewall Kitchen traditional crepe mix. Most important thing about mixing crepes is getting the right consistency of, uh, of the roux. You know, the most common mistake people make is they'll make it um, watery enough or they make it too watery, right? So it's very important that you follow the directions on these. For this particular case, on the recipe, it calls for one cup of water, two eggs, and two tablespoons of melted butter. Here's what's gonna make mine extraordinary. Number one, I double it up, right? Because we have two boys, and I have one wife who eats enough for two boys, that yet looks super hot, I don't know how she does that. But I need to make enough palachinki, or crepes, to satisfy this whole brood of uh, devourers. So, what makes this recipe good and extraordinary is, it calls for the, for the melted butter. But one thing I found out is when you add melted butter to flour, without a doubt, it'll thicken it. And sometimes if you make more than one serving, it'll thicken it really too much. So what I've discovered, this is my little secret, classic olive oil. Use olive oil instead of butter. It calls for two tablespoons of butter. I'm gonna use two tablespoons of olive oil times two for a total of four. Okay, so I have four eggs here, two cups of flour, four tablespoons of olive oil, and the pancake, or the but the cheeky mix, the crepe mix. Now, when you make pancakes, they always tell you, don't mix it too much. Don't mix it too much because you make it too rare. Well, when it comes to crepes, the opposite is true. You want to mix it. You want to make sure that this is mixed really, really, really good because for pancakes, you want a thick batter that's going to rise. For crepes, you got to make it exactly right because it's not something that's designed to rise necessarily. It's designed to spread out and cook, and cook even. Okay. So now we got this consistency. You can see how it's it's sort of watery, very different from a pancake mix, but it's actually perfect for what we're designed to do. This is a quarter ounce cup, uh, measuring cup. <laughs> it's a quarter ounce measuring cup, which is the perfect size because if you make it too big, the crepe's gonna get too long and you're gonna end up with not having enough crepes. This is the most perfect size. Now, the biggest mis another big mistake people make when making crepes at home, unless you have a flat grill, which I do in the backyard, but it's a little cold right now, is the heat. You never want to have this on full heat. You want to have this at medium of the most, right over here, like medium heat of the most. As a matter of fact, I'm going to turn this down a little bit too. So then another secret to this is how to maintain this heat even for the palachinka. You don't want it to rise too much. So what I'm gonna do is when I see it getting a little bit too hot, I'll just take it off. I'll just let it sit here for about 15, 20 seconds. Best way to flip these is with a spatula. The reason I say that is because I try to overcompensate. And I've tried to do this and it's sometimes successful, sometimes it's not, but it's not worth it. You know this is ready to flip when you can do this by itself. All I have on the bottom here is butter. What that does, that's also gonna clean or it's gonna cook my edges right here. As you can see, there's a little gold right around the edges. That means I'm ready to flip. Now notice that I'm not on my stove. Very simple, very easy. Look at this color, yeah, look at the color, yeah. It's the perfect color. Then, I can bring this back down here, and with my spatula, just a little bit, what that's going to do naturally is the heat's going to make the edges rise. I'm just going to press down a little bit, so I get them, or swirl, leave it here for a few seconds, get it off the heat. You don't want a very hot crepe, because that's going to... You don't want a crispy crepe because that's going to become a donut. The point of a crepe is to be consistent so you can... How do you know you have a good crepe? You can pick it up like that. And that's it. Let's see if the... This is what one of the crepes looks like. What do you think about this, Hems? 
Be careful, it's hot. Does that look good? Well, I'm that one. Okay. Wow, that one's perfect. I cannot overemphasize how important it is the temperature control of this thing. What I did is this pan is already hot from the previous one that I just made, right? So what I what I did is while the pan is still hot, I put I put the pan away from the heat. I poured my next batch in the hot, hot pan. I let it sit here for a few seconds. Then I'm gonna put it on my half. And what you're gonna start seeing is just like in the previous one, these edges are gonna start turning a little bit gold. Just a little bit. Once you see the edges start turning gold, like right over here, that means it's cooking. In a few seconds, you're gonna be able to flip this without burning it on one side. Again, the best way to ensure is swirl it a little bit like this. If you have enough butter on, on the bottom, you will know that this is not too burned. Notice how the middle is white and the edges are yellow. Now you're ready to flip this. The spatula, yeah, right over here. And again, the best way to flip this is like this. And you get, look at this color. Look at this color. This is awesome. And this is not easy to do. This takes a little bit of practice. But this combination of heat, cool, heat, cool, is absolutely critical. That's the only way I found out that in a normal kitchen, again, I'm not talking about a short order cook with a perfect flat grill. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about regular people in a regular kitchen. For a regular person in a regular kitchen, this is one of the most effective methods. And then look at this thing here. Now when I flip it, it's gonna have a little bit of golden brown on the back, like right over here. But you're pretty much done with this. I'll swirl it around. Now look the way it comes out. Look at the way it comes out. Oh my god, this is so easy. <laughs> wow. Oh, so now, now that we're done with the palachinki, I had a, the crepes, excuse me. I got about 12 of these in here. Well, minus three, so there's probably nine left. The name of the show is Clement's Extraordinary Ordinary Kitchen. Making crepes is fairly ordinary, right? What makes it extraordinary, like I mentioned earlier, is that little extra touch. In this case, you have just a regular crepe. I'm gonna take some regular grape jam, jelly, spread it around. That's for the sweet. Then what I'm gonna do is that feta cheese crumbles. The best way to get feta is at a little Middle Eastern store, but in this case, I got the nearest one available, which is in Stater Brothers. And I'm gonna sprinkle some of these right here. And this combination of sweet and salty is phenomenal. And this is how you can take an extremely ordinary breakfast staple and by adding something as simple as a feta cheese to something that's sweet and you get extraordinary kitchen. <laughs> Excuse me. I just had a moment but it's mine. Enjoy. But of course, it's all fun and games when the chef discusses things. But let's see what the what the local populace thinks. What do you think, Hems? Okay, me, 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 my brother. Nice, okay. <laughs> and then we have a two-year-old. If you can make a two-year-old happy, you can make anybody happy. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> He's the butter boy. What's your... And then my secret is the ginger spread from Trader Joe's. Simple, just the ginger spread, nothing else. So good. What about you there? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't matter what you're cooking or how you cook it. If this is the reaction you get at the end of the day, you've done a good job. So thanks for joining us on this first video on Palachinki, also known as crepes. And we'll look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thank you.